In this video, we're going to discuss the notion of arc length. So say you have a curve. Maybe it looks something like this. And let's say that this here is the y-axis, and this here is the x-axis. So we have x, and we have y. And let's just say that this here, x value is a, and this one is b. So the goal is to find the length of this curve. The length of this curve will denote by the letter lowercase s. We're going to call this the arc length. So what you do is you zoom in on a little piece. Let's just focus on one little piece. Let's just zoom in to a little piece of the curve. So here's our zoomed picture. So if you zoom in, you can maybe imagine that it might look something like this. So the goal is to find the length of this little piece here. So what we do is we approximate the length of this little piece with a line segment. So we take this little line here. So let's say that the length of this little piece is s sub i. Say we've divided everything into subintervals, and so we've divided this curve up into lots of little pieces, and this is the ith piece. So to find the length of this line, we draw a triangle like this. And we can call this distance here delta x sub i. It's the change in the x direction. We can call this delta y sub i. It's the change in the y direction. So the line segment would be delta s sub i. So delta s sub i is an approximation for s sub i. We can use the ancient theorem of Pythagoras now, which tells us that if you have delta s sub i squared, that's equal to delta x sub i squared plus delta y sub i squared. Taking the square root of both sides, only keeping the positive one because this is a length, we have delta s sub i, and that's equal to the square root of all of the stuff here. So we have delta x sub i squared plus delta y sub i squared. And now the trick is the following. You can actually pull out the delta x sub i squared. So when you do that, you get this. This is really beautiful. So we get delta x sub i squared and then square root. 1 plus, and then we have delta y sub i squared over delta x sub i squared. And the square root of delta x sub i is, of delta x sub i squared is delta x sub i. It's, that's a lot to say. Uh, the i makes it more complicated. <laughs> 1 plus, and then we have delta y sub i over delta x sub i. You could just say x i, I guess, just, you know. So you have like delta y over delta x. So delta s sub i is equal to that. So the arc length is approximately equal to the sum as i runs from 1 to n. This is, this is really terse here, by the way. This is delta x sub i square root 1 plus uh, delta, delta y sub i over delta x sub i squared. So if you take the limit, uh, you get an integral. And again, we're, we're, we're not being really precise here. Um, you know, you're supposed to use uh, some other stuff here to make this a little more rigorous. So the arc length, which we'll call s, is equal to the limit of this. I'll just say let n go to infinity. And so we get the definite integral from a to b. And we, here we have the square root of 1 plus. So this is going to become like a derivative, right? Delta y over delta x of i. So this will be like f prime of x, or dy dx, but I'll just call it f prime of x squared. And then this will become like your dx. So this will be the arc length. So that's just a really rough 
explanation of how to come up with the arc length. But that's the intuition behind it. Basically, you find, you approximate the arc length of a little piece and you have lots of little pieces and you add them up and you let the limit, let n go to infinity and you get an integral. It's worth mentioning that this integral is very hard to evaluate most of the time. Um, it's typically not very easy. Let's do like the simplest example I can think of. The easiest problem I can think of right now is something like ridiculously easy, like y equals x on 0, 1. Let's find the arc length of this using calculus. <laughs> so arc length. So y prime is 1. So s will be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root, right? Because this is your a, this is your b of 1 plus, and then y prime squared, so 1 squared dx. Yeah, because y prime is just 1, so you, so you plug it in. So you get 0 to 1, square root of 2, dx. When you integrate the square root of 2, you just get a number, an x next to it, because it's a constant. 0 to 1. You plug in the 1 first, so you get square root of 2. 1 minus 0, so you just get square root of 2. And that's the arc length. We didn't need to use the arc length formula for this problem. That's how easy it is. Watch this. You can do this problem without using the arc length formula. You say y equals x is here. Here's 1. This is 1. Just draw a triangle. This is 1, 1. Call this c. And use the theorem of Pythagoras, which tells us that this is true. So c is the square root of 2. Did that really quickly, but you can just use the Pythagorean theorem, just like straight up use it, and you'll get, you know, you'll get the arc length. So I picked this example because it was easy. Most of the arc length problems are not this easy. This integral tends to be uh, challenging. Um, you can't just make them up and, and, and do it. It takes a little bit more work. So for the purposes of this video, I just picked an easy one. So you find your y prime, you plug it in, and then usually there's some work involved here. In this case, it was just 1 plus 1 equals 2. And so things worked out. I hope this video has been helpful.